Hello again, Chris Delion for LMC 6310, Computers Expressive Medium at Georgia Tech in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, part of the Digital Media Program in Graduate School. And what I want to show you today is how to use load strings in processing to access local text files and also information out on the web. And the way that load strings works, we don't actually need to write a full application in this case. I know we usually start with void setup and void draw. Uh, we can integrate into that, but we're going to be using instead the other mode in processing where we don't actually provide that information we just press play and instead of having functions it's just gonna run our code top to bottom and kinda of demonstrate how these how the concept works of using load strings you see I printed out shows out in the console down here as always if the text appears too small for you especially on the console there's a gear in YouTube you can use to adjust the 720 HD resolution which is the resolution all these videos are recorded and uploaded at to get started uh, we want to save our sketch first, and that's going to be essential to have a directory that we can save a local text file into. So I'm going to name this something like load strings, let's say local file. Well, outside data, that's what I'm going to call it. There we go. And now, as always, we want to navigate to that folder, which is going to be for me inside documents, processing, move this out the way to my video. Uh, we scroll down until we see the outside data file. There it is. Okay. And now in this directory, we want to put a text file. So I'm just going to trash, uh, create a new text file. I'm going to save that to my desktop. List.txt. Could name it anything really. I'm going to move that into the directory that my sketch is in because that's where it's going to be looking for it when we do the uh, load strings and the way this works is I can say string lines equals load strings here's where I put the name of the file that's going to find right here in the same directory as our PDE sketch and that's really all there is to it once we've made the load strings call we can iterate through it we can say for int i equals zero i is less than lines dot length which is going to be how many lines have been loaded, I++, plus plus. and we could just here print out, print line, uh, lines at I. Let's put some contents in the list. Let's say, uh, you know, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, A, B, C, X, Y, Z, Chris Delion, George Tech, throw a reference in there to VG Dev, it's a little game club, might have heard of out here, big fan of. And when I press play, down here it lists out all the values that were found in that text file, line by line. One, two, three, BG Dev, yada, yada. Each line gets printed out. They're all popped into the array as soon as you've called load strings on it. There's also an additional step we might want to do. If we wanted to comma separate values, so we could say um, QWERTY, SDF, just some other gibberish, gobbly, Doodle, 3.14, Georgia Tech, Digital Media. And I'd say once additional numbers, let's say letters at the end of it just for the sake of it. This is called a comma separated value. And this is actually something you can save out for most common uh, spreadsheet applications, including Microsoft Excel. When you go to File Save, you just save it as a special format. Instead of saving it as an XLS, you choose CSV and it'll save this kind of format. It can also import this kind of format to view as a spreadsheet. And when I press play, of course, it just prints those out line by line with the commas. But we can do something that's really powerful in processing called string tokenizing, which is where I say string chunks equals split. And now split wants two arguments. It wants to know what's the string we're splitting, which of course is the current string we're looking at, and what are we splitting it with? The character in this case will be a comma. And so now instead of printing out each individual line, we're going to have a second for loop. We're going to change these to ii since we want a separate counter. We're going at sort of a layer deeper. Instead of doing lines.length, we're going to check chunks.length. And now we're going to print out chunks at ii. And after each one, let's put a little delimiter just to kind of separate them out. Next entry. And sure enough, when I press play, you'll see here, it's given each one its own line. 456 gibberish C, ABC gobbly D, 
This is a really easy way to load data from a local file to then put into a data structure for us to deal with. If we wanted to have circles or map information, uh, spreadsheet information that we could then turn into bar graphs in our program, we can export as a CSV and do it this way. See how there's a space before digital media? There's an additional processing uh, thing we can do in Java called trim, where if I wrap the string chunks and trim, I think that's how it looks, let's check, yeah, then trim automatically takes any leading spaces off the left or right sides, which can be handy if you're importing a comma separated value file, where some may or may not, especially if it's hand populated, have spaces on either sides inconsistently, and trim will help get rid of those for you. So that's how load strings works on a local file. And again, we can do anything we want with these in terms of uh, how we load them into Excel to edit them, save them back as CSVs. When you do it, it's going to give you a warning because it's going to say it's going to lose some formatting data. All they mean by that is that uh, if you save it as CSV, of course, it's going to lose if you had bold or italic entries in your cells. It's going to lose your uh, cell width and height and so on. Uh, naturally, a CSV file can't contain the equations and expressions. Um, some of the powerful things that Excel spreadsheets can do get lost. It's just going to turn it into a dumb, you know, file line by line, comma by comma, where these are rows and commas separate out columns of information in your spreadsheet. If we had a top level of these that was like, uh, clearly it's not what these are, but name, keyword, uh, favorite letter, and let's say we want to skip that header line in our CSV, which is useful when we import it into uh, Microsoft Excel. Well, if we just change this to one here in our for loop, then we skip the first line, and so we skip the header. Because it's unusual for us to do that, we want to make sure that we don't just accidentally had a typo or something. We might there want to add a comma starting at i equals one or a comment to avoid processing the header. And here, instead of printing it, of course, we could we could use this to instantiate objects in memory of a certain class, for example. Now, the other powerful thing this can do is instead of saying load strings from list.txt, is we can load these from a URL. So let's get rid of our splitting. And by the way, if we want to split upon a dash or a dollar sign or something else instead of a comma, you just change that, that character there and split. But let's simplify this down a bit just so it's going to print line by line. I'm going to go back so I'm not skipping the first line anymore. Change this back to lines at I. I'm going to press play. I just want to make sure that it's doing exactly what I expected it to before, the simple output. Now, if instead of putting a local file here, like list.txt, I could instead put there http colon slash slash www.google.com. And when I press play, it prints out line by line each of the lines of code from Google, um, as though it just did a view source on that web page. And so a particularly powerful reason for doing this is we could set up a PHP file, which I think you know if you're in if you've been following along with the other videos I've been making about uh, dynamic website generation for 63.13 as opposed to this is 63.10. We can make a PHP file, which is kind of a long file name, but there's there it is. And that's just an example I've set up where if I load that into a browser, let me see if I can do this safely. Got all kinds of gibberish on the screen. There we go. When I go to this page in the browser, I've got some PHP generating it. And it's just it just has an array of information simulating like it might be a database call or something. It's looping through that array, printing out each one, numbering it like this. And if we do a view source, Notice that each of these turns into a separate line, comma separated information, so we could do a split on these as well. I'm going to press play. There comes back our information from the server, line by line, all split by the lines.length call we did load strings. We could do, the, like I say, the split on the commas to divide these into further subdivisions of the data. If we, if we, so notice that something, the first line, doesn't have as many commas. We could check and see if lines.length is equal to three, two equal signs as a comparison. Then we can handle it specifically, otherwise we could present an error, like this line's missing some of the fields, or we could just skip it, kind of harmlessly and safely. Notice too that in generating this page, I put a slash in. Uh, the slash in is why when we view source, we see it each on a new line. Remember that usually for a website, we would instead do a VR, which would look more like this on view source. We would not see the skip lines, we'd instead see the VR character, but it would appear right on the website. But if we do that, then the lines won't divide that up because that's all a single line of text now. So it's an important distinction that if you do want to make a PHP file to be accessed uh, dynamically for, say, generating website information, you could pass in get parameters here to a PHP file to handle a database and return a list of comma-separated values. 
to do that, you don't want to use the BR characters, uh, which again, render right on the page, but not in the source. We'd want to use these slash n, which is the, the escape code for going to a new line, so that if we view it in browser, it goes to each a new line. Even though if we view the actual page, it won't render correctly, what we want is those line breaks, the slash n, not the BRs, in order to call this lines load string operation on it to divide up this data. And again, if you're curious about learning more about PHP and SQL interactions, uh, the LMC 6313 videos cover a lot of that. A lot of our students are in both of those classes. That's why I'm comfortable kind of mixing these two together a bit. Uh, but that said, if you got totally lost there, like, ah, why would I want an outside file? How do I write PHP? I'm not set up for that. Don't sweat it. Again, part of what's nice here is that you can also just work on a local file that you can put commerce separated data in. Loading it in and out of Excel as a CSV extension file. So that's Chris Dunleon for the uh, latest video, just showing how to use load strings and processing to deal with outside data, which is handy for one of our projects in the class, and of course, all kinds of other applications you might want to write with processing. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, hopefully you'll tune in next time for uh, uh, next material coverage. There'll be some more API content. Uh, the If you haven't subscribed yet, I would appreciate if you do. Uh, those numbers help me stay assured that as I make new videos, there's people actually seeing them and helps keep me going because uh, these are totally beyond the requirements of what I'm supposed to be doing for my job here. Uh, thanks so much, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.